Hi, I am Margarita Lopez from uh, Evry University, and uh, this is a joint work with uh, Jean-Charles Bricogne and Fabrizio Coricelli, entitled International Sourcing and Employment in Times of Financial Crisis, the Case of France. Let me start by motivating this work with the fact that we live in a hyper-globalized world and that this makes us much more vulnerable to any shock happening at the other side of the globe. Indeed, this uh, increased vulnerability became very clear in 2009, where the speed at which uh, shocks, financial shocks transmitted across borders was unprecedented. Since then, it has become crucial understanding what are the economic forces behind uh, the cross-border transmission of uh, financial shocks and what their real effects are. In this paper, we're going to focus on the role of trade finance and specifically on the role of inter-enterprise trade credit on the transmission of uh, cross-border financial shocks. Indeed, evidence on whether trade finance contributed to the real economic downturn across borders during the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis is somewhat mixed. In this paper, we're going to argue that at the micro level, it, the effect of trade credit on the transmission of shocks across borders will crucially depend on the health, on the financial health of the foreign supplier, reflecting the fact that the foreign supplier could or not uh, provide trade credit to the French uh, importer. So in order to assess this, we are going to try to replicate as closely as possible the conditions of uh, a natural experiment. For this, we need that our treatment effect, which is going to be a different level exposure to the global financial shocks, the intensity of the exposure to the global financial shocks, is as randomly assigned as possible. To do this, we need that firms, we need that to reduce the probability that firms self-select into this treatment. So uh, uh, to get this, what we use, what we do is that we exploit uh, cross-country differences in the severity of the financial crisis during 2008 and 2009, which we weight by uh, the firm's pre crisis sourcing ties with these countries, which we call the geographical international sourcing strategy of the firm, which is uh, predetermined uh, before the crisis. So uh, we argue that firms couldn't change the exposure measure by changing the international sourcing ties before the crisis because they couldn't foresee that there was going to be a crisis some years afterwards. In the same fashion, we're going to rely on a firm-specific predetermined measure of uh, the reliance on trade credit uh, of the firm. So, be on the years on the before the financial crisis again, with the aim of having a technological uh, measure of the trade credit usage of the firm instead of the firm's ability during the financial crisis to get or not uh, uh, trade credit. Which are the, fine, uh, the, the cross-border financial shocks that we exploit? Arguably, the crisis manifested in several ways, and this is going to be good for us because it will provide us with, with alternative measures, providing us with uh, robustness checks for the effect that we're seeking. So uh, we're going to uh, provide six measures, and we're going to inspire by the, by the work of Rosen Spiegel in 2012 uh, by using changes between 2008 and 2009 in uh, the, each country's GDP uh, growth, credit rating, equity market, exchange rate, and uh, additionally, we, we create a resilience measure by uh, averaging the first uh, three uh, measures. And last but not least, given that we are interested on the financial health of the foreign supplier, we're going to use uh, the World Bank's measure of uh, the change between 2008 and 2009 of uh, credit to private sector as a, as a share of GDP. All of these measures are going to be weighted by the firm's 
geographical international sourcing strategy, which will provide us the firm exposure, our treatment variable, which is going to be the firm level exposure to the international crisis during the crisis when interacted with the, with the crisis year. Importantly, given that, except for the exchange rate, when each of these uh, measures increase, uh, increases, the, the effect of the crisis will be uh, less severe for the country. So the lower the exposure for the firm. Uh, and also it will increase with important sourcing ties with, a, with a, for instance, a country with who suffered the less important uh, drop in credit to private sector during the financial crisis. So what we will have, uh, so our treatment effect will be uh, more positive. The more, the low, the the less the firm was uh, exposed uh, to the global financial shocks. So uh, we will evaluate a, a panel of around fifteen thousand so, uh, firms. Uh, French importers who were active over 2004 and 2009, for whom we're going to evaluate uh, the employment growth uh, by firm and by year, conditional on the, their exposure to the crisis and uh, their reliance on trade credit. And uh, of course, given that I'm not going to uh, have the, the time to uh, expose, um, expose you all our uh, empirical strategy, in any case, we, uh, we uh, in any case, uh, include a, uh, a bunch of uh, time-varying uh, firm level controls and uh, several fixed effects, uh, uh, firm level fixed effects, uh, sector times year fixed effects, or year fixed effects, etc. Before jumping to the conclusions, let me uh, show you some uh, uh, descriptive statistics providing some uh, graphical uh, relevance of the effect that we seek to, uh, to evaluate. So here we have uh, the employment growth for different firms over 2005 and 2009. In blue, in blue we have uh, firms who were highly exposed to the financial, uh, global financial shocks, and in red we have uh, uh, firms who uh, experienced a uh, low exposure to the global financial shocks as measured by uh, uh, a strong uh, strong sourcing ties with countries that were more resilient to the financial crisis and uh, strong credit uh, reliance or alternatively with high exposure we have a strong sourcing ties with countries that were uh, severely hit during the financial crisis and uh, also a uh, strong trade credit reliance. We can observe that before the financial crisis, the pre-trend of employment growth was not significantly different for the two types of firms. However, after the financial crisis, when the exposure to the crisis became relevant, we see uh, a strong difference, of course, we observe a, a drop in employment for everybody. However, it was much more important for firms with high exposure to the crisis, for whom we see uh, a, a seven percentage uh, drop uh, versus uh, a uh, four percentage drop uh, for low exposure firms. So uh, all in all, uh, we find uh, that uh, trade credit was either a mitigator or an amplifier of the uh, local access or the, to, to the local shock, uh, financial shock. Um, the effect, so it uh, dramatically depended on whether funds were connected or had a strong pre-crisis ties with countries who were uh, more resilient during the financial crisis. In this case, it allowed firms to mitigate uh, the, the domestic shock. But on the contrary, if uh, the shock, if uh, firms had strong pre-crisis ties with the countries who were uh, severely hit by the financial crisis, trade credit acted as a, an exacerbator of uh, the financial downturn. 